After I finished watching Has Been Hotel, I have been seriously obsessed with its soundtrack. At first, when I heard these songs in the show, I was not impressed too much. However, listening to them again after the show gave me more appreciation for musicianship, lyricism and vocal performances. I think the reason why is that when you are watching a show, your brain is busy with the story and this is what your attention is focused on. However, just listening to music allows you to focus on the music itself. So, I decided to rank all 16 songs from my least favorite to my favorite by giving each song a rating from 0 to 100. And this is the ranking that I formed. Loser Baby is my least favorite song. Probably super unpopular opinion, but I really don't like Keith David's voice. It sounds very hoarse to me, and his singing voice is even worse. It's like hearing a chalk scratching a chalkboard at 4 pm during super boring math class. I didn't like him singing in The Prince and the Rock. I didn't like him here either. And the instrumental was very simple, though I like how the trumpet mimics vocal melody. Listening to an instrument I was like discovering a song you have already heard again. And Blake Romana's part was pretty decent. But overall, this is the weakest song in the whole album. I like the tempo change in the song. Most of the song is 202 beats per minute, but the outro part, the last half a minute, which is sung solely by Alistair, is slower. This tempo shift is not just a nice music detail, it's a narrative shift in the song. Most of the song is like a duel between Vox and Alistair. But in the final part, Alistair takes control, silences Vox and completely dominates the musical direction. I wish streaming services would ever consider releasing instrumental albums. The outro part is very beautiful. It gives off such gothic vibes that I associate with medieval castles and ghosts. It's played on Glockenspiel if I'm not mistaken. Though I'm not sure, please correct me in the comments. Erica Henningsen is an incredibly talented singer, and her voice is so incredibly mellow in this song. It feels like a warm hug from your best friend that encompasses you and soothes your fevered mind. This song is an important moment for Sir Pench's development and the first step that he takes towards his redemption. Sir Pentius is the first character redeemed by Has Been Hotel, and it is very important for Charu to see that her endeavor is not pointless, as Adam before was trying to convince her. I know a lot of people love this song, mainly for two reasons. Many people love Angel Dust as a character, and I understand why, the second reason is that Poison is the most accessible, the most radio-friendly song in the whole show. Out of all 16 songs, the majority have Disney or Broadway musical style and quality. But three songs feel like they could fit on the mainstream radio. Poison is like the song that you would hear on a generic pop radio station while driving to work in the morning. Poison is the only song with just one vocalist involved. It has a very simple verse chorus structure. Musically speaking has probably this simplest instrumental, consisting mainly of synthesizer and very generic overused pop slash hip hop drum machine, and it feels like pseudo 80s style synth pop. However, this song just like good radio pop music is incredibly catchy and Blake Romano's performance is great, especially in the outer chorus when Angel's voice breaks and will feel the weight of hopelessness, muffled anger and fear on Angel's shoulders. This is also the moment when I actually begin enjoying the show. This is another radio pop song. It's really short, only one minute long, and I really love Emily's part. This is what makes me put Welcome to Heaven above Poison. Whenever Carmilla starts talking, flamenco guitar falls. This is probably a pretty lazy way to show that Carmilla is Hispanic, but I love this flamenco guitar nonetheless. What I love even more is Daphne Rubin Vega's voice. She's got a really beautiful and unusual voice that I enjoy listening to regardless of context. This song is her and Lily Cooper's Do It. To be completely honest, I am still not sure whether I love or hate Lily's accent. 
I feel both ways depending on the time of day. This is the catchiest song in the whole album. The only chorus sung by Ruben Vega is the definition of catchiness and should be in every dictionary. I really wonder whether this song is a reference to Steven Universe movie or just plagiarism because Hell's Great as That and Other Friends sound so damn alike. I'm inclined to believe that the former rather than the latter because Mimsy is voiced by Sarah Styles, also voiced Spinel in Steven Universe. At first I didn't notice the similarity, but when I heard instrumental, yes it's definitely it. Nonetheless, it's a pretty good song which beautifully meshes different styles and instruments together. You know what I really like about this song? In the 1950s and 1960s there was hysteria in the US when rock and roll music started being popular. Devoted Christians accused rock of being satanic music, and Adam's part in Hell is Forever is metal. Well, sort of metal. The song starts with a happy day in Hell reprise, but at a faster tempo. The instrument was very airy and adventurous, but then it gets violently interrupted by an electric guitar part, which completely changes the whole mood. Though I wish we had an actual metal song in this show, that would have been absolutely awesome. And let me say this again, Erica Henningsen is a freaking treasure. Her voice must be protected at all costs. Can someone please tell me how the song is actually called? Because on YouTube it's called The Show Must Go On, while on Spotify it's called Just Finale. Anyway, the first half of the song is the reprisal of Happy Day in Hell, then Alistair's solo in minor key begins. The instrumental sounds very eerie and dark. We still don't exactly know why Alistair is helping Charlie with her hotel endeavor, but the song implies that he's not acting on his own accord. He does what he's told to do by someone, probably by Lilith, Charlie's mother. That's my theory at least. There are only a couple of songs that allow Stephanie Beatrice shine, and that's a shame. She's got a great singing voice, which she proved in Disney's Encanto, where she gave her voice to the main protagonist, Mirabelle. It's an emotional moment for Veggie, who thanks Charlie for helping her to forget her past as an angel, making her feel like a stranger who can be whoever she wants to be, who can start everything anew. By far the cutest, most adorable moment in the whole show. I love how Stephanie Beatrice and Erica Henningsen perfectly harmonize with each other, and at some point their voices even melt together. I know lots of people don't really like Cheggy because they feel like Charlie and Veggie don't even have chemistry. With this statement I fully disagree. Veggie and Charlie went through a lot together. Charlie saved Veggie when she needed someone's supporting hand most. Charlie forgave Veggie for concealing the truth about being an angel, and Veggie repaid by loyalty and unconditional support of Charlie's hotel endeavor. Their relationship is truly beautiful and precious. A classical Disney princess moment. What can I say? I really love it. I love the tempo change. I love the polyphony technique used. Polyphony is a technique in music where different harmonic parts converge and play all at the same time. It reminded me of We Don't Talk About Bruno from Encanto, where polyphony was used as well. I suspect Win Manuel Miranda's work had a big impact on Sam Haft and Andrew Underberg, the composers of the show. And Erica Henningsen demonstrates her powerful and super versatile vocal abilities. A very subtle moment when Vegas sings this line. We think that she means demons, but she actually means angels, we understand that later on. Did I already mention that I love flamenco guitar and Daphne Rubin Vegas voice? Well, this song was literally made for me. I love the message behind the lyrics. It is a really good lesson to Vegas. Don't let your hatred dictate what you do, instead let love be your master. Don't fight the angels because you hate them, fight them because you want to protect those that you love the most in this whole world. Erica Henningsen's best performance in my opinion. Absolutely fantastic vocals. 
This child was big character moment. She finally realizes her true potential as a leader, who can make different people follow her. She finally realizes she's the prince, and in her power there is a huge force. A force that can move mountains, change hearts and possibly even stop Angel's reign of terror. The song that I listened to most from the album. What can I say, the song is almost perfect. It reuses the Hell is Forever white motif again. The song turned Emily into one of my favorite characters, despite the pretty limited screen time that she got in the first season. She's like Charlie in so many ways, her heart is pure and she thinks that angels only do good things. She has no idea about what is actually going on in hell. And that angels practically commit genocide. In the song she accidentally finds out the truth, but instead of trying to defend Angel's position, she immediately acknowledges that extermination is absolutely wrong and it must be stopped. Hard to call it not an obvious choice to be honest. This is the moment when Charlie and her father Lucifer are finally open and sincere with each other. It's finally the moment when they share the feelings that they have been trying to keep locked and hidden from each other for so many long years. What else can I say, this is by far the most emotional song in the whole show. This was me ranking has been hotel songs from worst to best. Share your favorite or least favorite songs from the show in the comment section.